This YouTube video was presented by Screamscape, your ultimate guide to theme parks. It's the coast of cruise. Exciting day here at IAPA. As the train was unveiled for Goliath, the new roller coaster going into Six Flags Great America. We've got Hank, who is the park president of Six Flags Great America, joining us. How excited are you? Thrilled. I mean, it's, it's the dream of my career of a park president in Six Flags. Put in a three world record breaking with the roller coaster. It's, it's an incredible experience, and this is going to be an incredible ride, so we're thrilled. In, in the odd event that you haven't seen the pictures or the videos <laughs> or anything like that, or I know we are listeners, they probably watched it about 50 times. Tell us about the ride. I hope so. For the ride, the ride is obviously a wooden coaster, Rocky Mountain Construction Group, or the group that's putting the ride together. And, you know, it, it is going to be a 180-foot drop, an uh, 85-degree steep uh, drop, and it's going to be 72 miles an hour, which is going to make it the tallest, steepest, fastest wooden roller coaster in the world. And we also, when it's built, we'll also have more wooden roller coaster track than any other theme park in the world. So it yep. truly makes us the king of wooden coasters. Very interesting. Now, what made you guys decide to go this direction of the coast? Our guests. Our guests told us what they wanted to see, and we had a, we had an area of the park, uh, which was uh, where our old BNM coaster, Iron Horse, stood, which is now it's like in, in your place. backyard. In my backyard, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And we had a space in the Utilize that space when when Walter and GNM built that coaster for us. They custom designed that coaster for that area. And if you know our park, it's by railroad track. There is yeah. service border. Mm -hmm. It's a very tight area. And but we needed to put something that was a ultimate thrill in a space that's very difficult to design. So Fred and, he, uh, and Alan came to us as we were talking about what we wanted to do and, and looking at you know all the great options that there are in the theme park world of something to fit that area to deliver the ultimate thrill, this is what we came up with, and I think it's 100% where we need to be. And I gotta ask you about the one part of the ride that's got me a little bit scared, and that's the upside down, and yeah. you just sort of hang there. You do. There's two inversions on the ride, and also some high bank turns, but that barrel roll, it's gonna be, it's gonna be. Because there's nothing so, like that anywhere. There's not, there's not, you know, it's, it's so funny, we talk about how we're marketing this coaster, and how we need to get the word out about this coaster. Of course, we're focused on those world records. This thing has some pretty cool inversions of bank turns in it as well. So, there's other coasters that do it, and obviously other wooden coasters that have entered into the area. But that inversion we're speaking of now, Pat, is it's very unique, and I think it's been incredible. All right, well, I really think that uh, Raging Bull's probably uh, seen its end of its time at your park. Why don't you move that down to Six Flags America? And if there's any other coasters, you know, along that line, yeah. they said you guys are getting all the fancy toys up there. Yeah, we you know. don't know Raging Bull. I don't think that's going to be over there. I, mean, I never know. It's, it's been uh, it's been a, a, a good move for Six Flags on our system to look at those opportunities. And that obviously has been the case. I think Apocalypse is a tremendous addition. Uh, and, and I think it's, it's been a, a real a fan favorite since it's moved from Six Flags Great America to Six Flags America. So. Now, with Goliath, where are we at in construction and when are we thinking, when it's going to open? Uh, it's going to open in the spring. It's, it's, a, it's an interesting construction season in Chicago. Yeah, I used so, to live there and work absolutely. on Lake Michigan. It was no doubt about it. And you know, we're, we're coming along great. Uh, you know, most of the stuff in ground is, is in ground. We'll start putting wood up in the air here soon. Generally, probably the week after Thanksgiving, you'll see some wood starting to come up in the air. You know, once you get in Chicago, once you get everything in the ground before the ground freezes. You if you're out there in the cold, but you know, these guys are from Idaho, too. So it's All right. cold, uh, <laughs> not like we're, it's a Miami construction company. So, yeah, it's, it's a, a, a process, and, you know, we're hitting our milestones. We'll top it off sometime during the winter, uh, and then, you know, it, it flows here. So, you know, we're, like, our goal is, is early spring. So that's where we're we, we, we don't open. And we're late open yeah, you March, so we don't May. open until May. So, it's a... I know it's something I'm hoping to get up there for, you know, get up, get up there, hit a Cubs game and go on the new ride. Is, uh, it's, it's on my to-do list for next year. All right. It was great meeting you. You guys have a great addition. Thanks for, thanks for coming out today. No problem. We'll see you next year. We're now joined by Alan, who is the designer and mastermind behind the stuff here at Rocky Mountain Construction. And we're going to talk a little bit more about Goliath going into Great America. Now, 
I, I asked Hank about this when we interviewed him, and the one thing that's, you know, I saw the video and just boggled my mind was the upside down that you just sort of hang there. How, tell me about designing that and how, how where that idea came from. That is wild. Um, I, you know, the, the feature on Outlaw Run, which is 150 to 30 degree bank, yep. the similar element, um, but it originally started with the idea of exactly what's on Goliath. And the, in order to make it as impressive as it is, you need a big ride. And so I've been waiting for a ride <laughs> that's big enough and tall enough to be able to handle that, as well as the, the Raven inversion that's uh, first kind on a wooden So these here. are things that have been bubbling up for a while, and you're just like, somebody do it, somebody do it. Yep, and we just needed a, a, a ride giant enough to be able to get them all in and keep the G-forces low enough and uh, give you a lot of a lot of upside down time to really make that element pop. Yeah. So when a park uh, decides that they want a wood coaster, they're going to go with a wood coaster, they come to you guys, what is the decisioning factor into making those elements, or what, do, what does the park say, hey, we want this, or do they just say, we just want a wood coaster, you tell us what we want? Um, yeah, typically um, I try to feel them out for whether they're looking for something more for the enthusiast, more for everybody. Um, but uh, I usually just propose something first, and then we'll tweak it from there. So I like to take the first shot because you know a lot of times they don't know what if they haven't seen it. They don't. Yeah, know they exactly. Want it. So, so you can add the things that you want to put in there, and then you, you keep going back to the drawing board. And then, yeah, and then you know we can always tweak. So it does, is the first coaster the most craziest coaster concept ever? It has like every inversion known to man, and they're like, we need to tone this down a bit. So you just take out a few. It's like a negotiating thing. Like I want a million dollars. Well, let's go back that with uh, nine thousand dollars. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, actually, uh, on Medusa, um, I started out with offering them one or two barrel rolls, and in the end, we ended up with three. So, and that was based on their impressions. So, all right, it doesn't always get scaled back. Sometimes it gets scaled up. Very and good. I mean, that's a, an exciting project as well. It doesn't get all the hype because it is in you know a different country, but the, the videos of that looks phenomenal with the. Yeah. Is that the one that goes off the lift and then goes right upside down? Yep, barrel roll down the down drop. It's, uh, you know, sometimes, I guess, in order to make a ride um, that's not the tallest or the biggest, um, as exciting, um, the elements just come at you faster. And so that's more in line with typical, um, you know, wood coaster design. It's more of a, a toppy design. It's all about the speed that it comes at you. So. They're different in, in their mannerisms, but it uh, doesn't say that one's going to be better or more exciting than the other, because um, that Medusa is action-packed. All right. Well, you've had a chance to do Outlaw Run. Oh. <laughs> loved it. Incredible ride. So we... I am, I'm jealous. I mean, I have no... Uh, you guys need to come over on the East Coast a little bit so I can get onto some of these coasters. We'll work on that for you. <laughs> uh, okay, okay. You heard it here first, guys. Call <laughs> Alan. <Well, Ellen. laughs> All right, well, thank you very much. You guys have a great coaster here, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you.